Welcome back everybody, Clint today with Classic Firearms here to talk about winter carry. There's more and more of us gonna be in colder weather here now that winter is upon us. And a lot of us are already wearing more layers, thicker clothing, trying to stay warm. And because of that, that also makes it a little bit easier to carry full-sized pistols, which I've got a couple laid out here in front of me, which you can't see right at the moment. But we're gonna be talking today about the top five guns for concealed carry in the winter. So starting off number five on my list is one that is actually brought to you by you. Yes, on my Monday night live streams, I often ask quite a few of you about different video topics and conceal carry for winter or the winter months was a topic that we recently discussed. And I asked if you guys actually switch your summertime carry and your winter carry out, uh, what do you switch out for? Does that make sense? And number five on my list is pretty much brought to you guys, the Walther PDP. This gun right here, I've got not as much experience with the Walther PDP like I do with the other guns on the list, which is why it's number five on my list. But there's no arguing that this gun is popular. It's ergonomic, it's comfortable, decent capacity with a 15 round magazine. You have the optics cut that you want and of course you have the legendary Walther reputation behind it. So it's no surprise why so many of you on these live streams ultimately say, hey, I'm thinking about getting the Canik SFX or the Glock 19 or 17 and the Walther PDP. Or should I get the PDP and a 320 or the 320 or the Glock? And there's so many times where the PDP has been brought up. It's like, wow, you guys really like this gun. And so that's why number five is brought to you by you, the Walther PDP. If it's something you're looking for, that's a little bit larger in size compared to a lot of the different micro compacts and everything else that are available. And if you look at the PDP Compact, the PDP C, four inch, they also make a five inch model and also a four and a quarter. But if you look at, and maybe actually you guys might like the five inch model a little bit more in this case because a slightly longer barrel with the same grip size might be more preferred because typically what is actually printing is the grip itself. And that's why a lot of you prefer maybe a longer barrel, shorter grip, and the capacity in this case, as long as you're still packing at least 15 rounds, a lot of you seem to be pretty happy about it. And it being chambered in nine millimeter, obviously nine millimeter just makes sense. Granted, that's not to say that you couldn't carry a, uh, I don't know, a 10 mil, like the FN 510 that you see right here, that's a beautiful pistol. And it's also got a 15 round capacity on it, which is great. I mean, it is hard to argue why not the FN 510, but it is just bigger, bulkier, heavier, right? So with it being the winter months, however, that allows you to carry bigger, heavier guns, uh, something that might protrude a little bit more. So maybe having the shorter frame isn't that big of a deal in this case. Let me know what you guys think, but for number five, the Walther PDP, and let's move into our number four pick. For my number four pick, this one's actually brought to us by my dearly beloved, because she prefers the HK VP9. In fact, this is her personal gun right here. This is what she likes to carry uh, whenever she, you know, is in her winter clothes, which, you know, I'm not mad about it. Uh, of course, she wants to flex on all of us by owning an HK, so there's that. I definitely am a fan of the color, but there's something to be said about the ergonomics and the feel of the HK VP9. Now, when it first came out, everybody was ooing and eyeing over the fact that HK released, first of all, an available and affordable pistol, and secondly, the controls on it were very nice. Now, if you're like me, you're probably not too big of a fan of the European mag release, which is right back here. So bang, 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 gun goes empty. You just drop it like that. Simple enough, right? Oh, 17 round capacity too. So that's pretty sweet, right? But for me, I just like that traditional button release right back here by my thumb, you know, which again, if you practice with it, isn't that big of a deal. But notice something else too here with the Streamlight TLR7, Trijicon RMR. This has a pretty decent 
profile. I mean, it's not too big and bulky. It's not something that I think is gonna get too snagged up on anything. I do need to get her better sights so that actually co-witness. I don't, I don't know what she's thinking there. But anyway, the VP9 for me has always been a pretty comfortable gun. Just nothing really too fancy. No really, you know, there's nothing really exciting about the gun, but I do like the forward slide serrations. I like the little extra grip right back here towards the rear of the slide if you needed to really grip it or anything. Me, personally, I just, sometimes run the actual optic. Uh, then of course it does have your uh, ambidextrous, ah, there we go, like that right there, if I'm trying to show it correctly, the ambidextrous slide release also. So let me know what you guys think. Trigger on it feels great. HK VP9, great capacity, and obviously we're going for a little bit larger framed guns because of that winter clothing like I'm already talking about where you might also, you gotta think a little bit about penetration here in this case as well. I know some people that might carry 380 during the summer because most people typically are wearing less clothing. You don't have to worry about you know penetration as much, uh, but again, if you're carrying 380 hollow points and you've got leather jackets that might need to be gone through and different and multiple layers will it have enough penetration in fact i think this might be another test because at one point kaya and i had a little test because i just didn't think 380 might actually go through a two by four you know i just thought no nah, i don't know man i really not never gave it that much attention and it did you know so i was proved wrong on that front he was very excited to prove me wrong once uh but <laughs> anyway let me know what you guys think about number four on the list being the hk vp9 Okay, let's run the VP9. Good job, HK. I guess I need to sight in my fiance's red dot. <laughs> Number three on the list has me laughing a little bit because it's just Glock, it's just Glock, okay? And let, let me explain. The Glock 47 was probably one of the smartest things that Glock could have done business-wise. Other than just making a new frame, there's not much more they really had to do. I mean, they already have the 17 out there, which, you know, is the, the, the standard full-size gun. Uh, they have the Glock 19 out there, and now all of a sudden, out of these two, you can make four. I mean, essentially, you can make the Glock 45, you can have the Glock 19, the Glock 17, quote unquote, uh, which is just a factory 47, and the 19L, which now is pretty much the Glock 49, right? So <laughs> you have all of these different options out of just these two guns. Now, Jason, our friend on the channel, of course, he says he's completely comfortable with carrying a Glock 34, which we know is the long boy competition model, you know? And so that's very interesting if you ask me and having that added barrel length with a greater sight radius makes it a little bit more accurate, a little bit easier to get some follow-up shots. Uh, you also have the little bit added benefit of having a longer barrel when it comes to velocity as well. So, you guys let me know what you think. The Glock 45, should that be it? Or should it be this 19L that I'm talking about, or you know, now the 49? Uh, you know, here, I can pretty much, you know, without YouTube getting mad at me, I can do this off camera really quick. See, there's the barrel slide assembly for the 47. There's the frame for, and my Surefire, for the 47. Now let's go ahead and disassemble the 19. And I will show you exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to making something like the 49L. So now you've got a 17, 17 length barrel and slide assembly, but a 19 grip and frame. So 15 round capacity versus the 17 round capacity of this guy, right? So. A lot of people I think might actually prefer this because it's easier to conceal carry or conceal this portion of the gun. The part that prints, as I've mentioned before, is the grip itself. And so if you have a shorter grip, still a decent capacity of 15 plus one, right? Depending on what state you're in. You know, just let me know what you think. And this gun's big brother, this 
you know, collaboration, conglomerate, whatever, is, is the Glock 34 with the larger frame and even a longer barrel and slide, which Jason said he likes to carry. So, and there's what would be considered the 45 with the shorter barrel. There you have it. Let me know which one's your favorite. That's why number three is just Glock. You can't argue it's reliability. Capacity is great. Aftermarket support is wonderful. Magazines are everywhere. Price point is competitive. Let's go on to number two. <laughs> number two on my list might catch a few of you by surprise because it's one that's, well, it's a little bit newer. I have limited experience with this specific gun, but the brand as a whole and all the other models other than this compact model, I have quite a bit of experience with. And if the CZ Shadow 2 Compact is anything like the Shadow 2s that I've played with, this is going to be a very impressive little gun. And yes, they've ultimately made the Shadow 2 light pretty much competition ready out of the box guns with their phenomenal triggers, excellent weights, the way they feel and everything else, just amazing. The ergonomics behind them are awesome. The trigger, oh my God, single action, double action. The CZ Shadow 2 Compact with the four inch barrel, 15 round capacity, optics cut, also single action, dingle, dingle, single action, double action with, it's just, it's like everything I could want mostly in a hammer fired carry gun. Like this thing just screams, shoot me, carry me, show me off. You know what I mean? And so the CZ Shadow 2 Compact is one that is just speaking to me right now. It's not number one on my list. And that's just because I, t I, I just haven't shot this gun. I've shot, you know, all sorts of different CZ Shadows, 75s, of course, Shadow 2s. And it's like, I love the guns they feel amazing right the only thing i've ever really com like complained about with some of the shadows is how narrow the actual slide is could be a little difficult to get a good grip on uh, but for competition it works very very well and if you take a look at the at the shadow 2 it looks like it has a pretty similar type of slide being that little bit less surface area which again is great because the cz shadows have pros and cons right but in one aspect it's great because well the cz shadow 2 has such a low bore access that the felt recoil is very minimal well because of that though you have a pretty narrow slide so you might not have as much surface area but if you throw a red dot on it like i do mostly everything else anyway going back to the vp9 of you know my fiance's uh well you're just gonna be able to rack it back and forth anyway so it's like easy enough you know cool so let me know what you guys think about that i super i'm very much so impressed by the cz shadow 2 compact I hope you guys are too. And before we roll into my number one pick, there's a couple of honorable mentions out there. Obviously, we can talk about the SIG 320 being modular and all that type of stuff. It's it's a great gun all around, you know, but for carry, there might be better options, but the 320 also makes sense with your capacity, different magazine sizes, and the modularity, it's just good. And then, Staccato. Staccato C2. It has to be somewhere on the list, but it's an, in an honorable mention, and here's why it's an honorable mention. I don't have hardly any experience with staccato. Unfortunately, we can't carry staccato because we don't have an actual brick and mortar. So the popularity of the staccato brand and manufacturer is awesome. We wish we could bring them onto the channel a little bit more. We've talked about working together, but we don't have a brick and mortar. So apparently, you know, we can't carry their guns. It's not like we don't have a nationwide reach. You guys catching the shade? Anyway, the last one that's on my, on my honorable mention list is something new from Alpha Foxtrot, the S15, which is ultimately a 1911 compact that takes uh, shield arms magazines. So you've got great capacity coming out of the S15 with being a hammer fired gun and chambered in nine mil. So it's like, you know, sounds pretty freaking good to me. So with all that being said, let me know what you guys think about number two in the honorable mentions and let's go ahead and move into our number one pick. For my number one pick, it's going to be what I actually carry. And that is the SIG P365 X Macro. And in this case, I'm going with the uncompensated model. I wanted the little bit larger, a little bit longer barrel length just to get that little bit more velocity. And is it really all that concerning the, the open ports on the slide of the 365, you know, compensated models, like debris, 
dirt, anything like that. And since I'm thinking winter carry, you know, there's the possibility you get snow down your pants or something, you know, and you don't want any blockage. <laughs> All right, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Snowball fights, right? Uh, but is it really that concerning debris and stuff like that getting into the comp of the 365X macro that has the compensation on the slide? I don't think so. I think it's going to be just fine. I've never had an issue with it with the, when I have been carrying an, a comp model. But this one, just as a great everyday carry, this seems to be the model that I that that really speaks to me. Now. You'll notice I've got the Holosun HS507KX2. Great little red dot that works very, very well with this gun. Iron sights match up pretty well also. I'll see if we can get that to, you know, somewhat, I guess I kind of have to put it right in front of me so it focuses because, you know, auto tracking and stuff like that. Uh, but look at that, you can even see that giant red dot. That's not how it actually looks, by the way. To the shooter, it looks much better, much cleaner, much crisper, okay? Uh, but the HS507KX2, Decent little red dot, again, that that still allows me to pick up my irons that I like. And then of course the TLR7A, which is an excellent little compact flashlight or you know weapon mounted light as well. Something I'm a big fan of. Coupling that with my Alpha Mega Kydex holster, it's a great option for me. I love carrying this gun. I feel confident with it. And again, 17 plus one is just excellent. The trigger on these are also really nice. You'll notice I've got that little flat, you know, whatever's and then we're gonna go to ghost this guy a little bit of take up before we hit that nice obvious break and then the reset here there you go a little bit of travel not much at all it just feels good i, I know some of you are like oh my god of course it would be the 365 well it makes sense sig hit an absolute grand slam with the 365 macro just the 365 in general because like what I was talking about before with perhaps the Glock 34 or the 19L, uh, some of you might prefer a longer slide, shorter grip. And well, due to the modularity of this compact firearm, you can do that. You can throw on different slide and barrel assemblies. You can throw on different frames, all without having to fill out another 4473 or you know worry, uh, worrying about purchasing another gun. You know, so, so a lot of you might be thinking, I want to stipple a gun, you know, and this would be the gun to do it on because again, it's modularity. If you screw up the grip or the grip module on this just get a new one who cares you know if your dog chews on it or something i don't know have you seen that meme yeah no okay anyway sig just they did it right with this gun so good job sig way to just absolutely dominate the market but let me know what you guys think about this list are there guns on this list that you think shouldn't be there at all <laughs> Are there just, is it just too obvious? Uh, are there some that caught you by surprise? Do you agree, disagree? Are there guns that you think should be on this list that weren't? Do you think the honorable mentions are honored enough? Uh, let me know what you guys think down below and don't forget to head on over to cfcontest.com to see all the wonderful things that we've got going over there. I'm sure like at some point, like a little code word or something might show up at the bottom of the screen, maybe. Uh, and on top of that, if you're not subscribed, get subscribed. I mentioned earlier in this video about the live stream and on most Monday nights when I'm available around 7 p.m. Eastern, I do like to go live and talk with a lot of you and they seem to be growing in some popularity. A lot of you like to tune in, talk for a bit and yep, we talk about any and everything. Uh, daughters going goth and the Walther PDP obviously and zombies and everything you could ever think of uh, we we talk about it typically over a nice glass of scotch too that's that's my choice so don't forget to tune in uh, and again hit that little bell to be notified when we go live when we have new videos come out and we go live across multiple platforms including YouTube obviously uh, Twitch Twitter and probably my favorite Rumble as well so get subscribed on all of those and if you're not if you're not on our email list as well yeah get on our email list because well we only bring you the best products obviously at the best prices so you don't want to miss out on that okay all right guys i'll leave it off there i'll see you down in the comment section below god bless you guys and again and as always we greatly appreciate you your viewership and your business and we'll see you soon at classic firearms